Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take a close look at the inductive reactants. The reactants of the inductor, the opposition to the current of the inductor, and the way we find that x of l is 2 pi times the frequency times l. Sometimes we also write the equation x is equal to omega times l, where omega is equal to 2 pi f. So that's the radial frequency. f is the oscillating frequency of the voltage supply, in this case 60 hertz. So, how do we calculate the inductive reactants? Well, here's the equation. So we can say x sub l is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. In our example, the frequency is 60 hertz. And the, the self-inductance, the inductance of the inductor is 0 0.79, whoop, 7958, Henry's. And so in this case, x sub l is equal to, let's use a calculator. So we have uh, times 2 times pi times 60, and it is 300 ohms. If we take a look at that equation, we notice that the reactance of the inductor is actually a function of the frequency. So x sub l is equal to a function of the frequency of the oscillation of the source right there. And so it's equal to 2 pi L times the frequency. And notice that looks a lot like the linear equation Y equals MX plus B. M here is the slope, that would be 2 pi L. X is the variable, in this case, it's F. So it's a straight line function. So if we were to graph that on the line right here, let me use a different color, it looks like this. So this is actually a representation of the inductance X sub L as a function of the frequency. As the frequency goes up, the reactance goes up as well. Notice that if we have a larger inductor with more inductance, then the slope will be steeper. That means as frequency goes up, the reactance goes up as well. And if L is a smaller number, then it's not as steep, and of course the reactance doesn't go up as high as a function of frequency. So the slope is simply determined by the size of the inductor in the circuit. All right, so it's simply a linear function. Double the frequency, double the reactance. Triple the frequency, triple the reactance. So the relationship is simply a linear relationship. And just to summarize, well, why does an inductor uh, have a larger reactance when the frequency goes up? Well, it turns out an inductor opposes a change in the current. As the current changes more frequently, at a higher rate, then of course the inductor will oppose that higher rate more so and the reactance goes up. If the frequency declines, then the change of the current is less, less change of the current, less opposition to that, and therefore the reactance drops. So it's simply a function of higher frequency, higher change in the current, more opposition to that change, and therefore higher reactance. And that's why the relationship is simply a linear relationship. If you double the frequency of the oscillation, you simply double the reactance, double the opposition, to the change in the current. And that's how we do that. That's inductive reactance.